In our J technical report, we normally have a section for thrust susceptibility. In this video, I will discuss this topic. The widely used soil classification for thrust susceptibility in North America is the U.S. Corps of Engineers system. This is on page 189 from Canadian Foundation Engineer Manual. Above this table shown, there are the two paragraphs explaining the uh, U.S. Corps of Engineers classification system. As highlighted here, this system is based on the percentage of fine fraction less than 0 0.02 millimeter. However, this explanation sometimes causes confusion. According to this classification system, the soils were classified into four classes. F1, F2, F3, F4. And from F1 to F4, the susceptibility becomes more and more severe. This system mentioned in the title portion, it said that use a percentage finer than 0 0.02 millimeter by weight. However, if we look carefully this table, we'll notice that this system used actually two criteria instead of one criteria, which is the one noted here. <clears throat> this criteria is very clear. However, there's another one. <clears throat> it was hidden in the table. The 0 0.02 millimeter criteria should be applied only to coarse grained soils. For example, The gravel less than 3% that's a non frost susceptible. So that's gravel. So from 0 to 3, that's a non frost susceptible. From 3 to 10, That is uh, F1. From 10 to 20, that's uh, 
f2 and greater than 20 that's f3 so that's for gravels so you can see when we apply this criteria we also need to add the soil tap for sand it is from for sand the same thing from zero to three is a non frost susceptible from three you can say three to fifteen is the F two. And the greater than 15 is uh, F3. But if the sand is a uh, fun it's even though it is a sand but uh, when it greater when the when the particles finer than 0 0.02 millimeter is greater than 15% it is F4. So it can be F3. It can also be F4. So that's again <coughs> tells us that when we apply this criteria, we must consider the soil tap. This criteria only cannot give us a single answer. So that's for gravel and the sand, which are the coarse grain soils. <clears throat> so for coarse grain soils, we use this criteria plus soil tap. But for fine green soils, we use a different uh, criteria. Let's uh, first talk about the worst soils. The worst soils are over here. Let me put another color. Wow, the clay. The uh, when we saw silt. When we encounter the silt soil, automatically it is F4 class. Warped clay is interbedded clay and silt, so it's also we can consider that's 
also sealed. If we ignore the clay part, <clears throat> that's also sealed soil. So when we saw sealed, automatically it is F4. And then we look at uh, clay. For clay, use different color here. We can go through it, go through the table, we can say that's clay. Or clay. That is clay. That is clay. So for clay, we can see here it used the uh, plasticity index, not the percentage finer than 0 0.02 millimeter. You can see here has nothing about that percentage. Also for the silt, you can say it's nothing about that percentage. So we can say fine grain soils, silt and clay, they do not use this criteria. For silt, soil tap is enough to classify it as a F4. For clay, we use a plasticity index. So PI. We use a PI. In this table, it mentioned one number. PI greater than 12 or less than 12. So when the plasticity index of the clay is less than 12, it is F4 or here. F4, F4C. When the plasticity index is greater than 12, it's F3C. So you can say that with the increase of plasticity, the uh, soil becomes less frost susceptible. However, there's something contradictory in this table. For the last atom in F4, it says the wild clay and the other fine grained soil. Other fine grained soil. It include here high plastic clay. However, high plastic clay normally have a plasticity greater than 12. Like here, have high plastic clay but it, it belongs both F3 and F4. So there's something we need to uh, go one step more to look at the details.
This is all the data plotted on this chart. The data are from a corpse of engineers testing data. You can see on this chart that uh, the fat clay corresponding uh, first the susceptibility of uh, negligible to very low. It's almost similar as the clean sand. So, but this was not consistent with the table we saw earlier. According to this chart, the fat clay is supposed to be non frost susceptible or F1. Why high plastic clay can be considered as a non frost susceptible soil? In this video, I would not uh, dive into it. If you want to know the answer, please watch another video I created for frost susceptibility. In order to get a second opening, another classification system is worth mentioning. This one is called TRRL system. It is developed by UK Transport and Road, Road Research Laboratory. From this system, we can see 